Robert Dubeck did something unusual at the end of his one-actor comedy, The Book of Moron, which ran last week at the Playhouse at Westport Plaza. He invited the audience to stay for a second performance of different material. Dubeck was making a recording for satellite radio, and he wanted the piece to have the reactions of a live audience. Perhaps the most telling review I can give to The Book of Moron is that we stayed for the second set. That word set, of course, belongs to the world of stand-up comedy, and at times The Book of Moron seems to belong to that world, too. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Dubeck is an expert practitioner of stand-up, with shrewd timing and an easy rapport with the audience. But the Book of Moron has three elements that Aristotle would recognize <laughs> as parts of drama, plot, character, and thought. The plot is the story of Bob, our narrator, who has lost his memory. Not the little things like how to drive or swear, but the big things like what he believes in, what his scruples are. For Bob, this is a grievous loss, and when he's thinking out loud in front of the audience, He's just trying to discover who he is. Bob hears voices that help him along the way of this journey of self-realization. These are the characters, the voice of reason, common sense, the inner moron, the inner child, the inner jerk, and his scruples. Actually, jerk isn't the word Bob uses, but his scruples are different from mine. Dubeck gives each character a distinctive sound and demeanor so we can tell the speakers apart in conversation. The plot thickens when Bob figures out why he has lost his memory. That discovery reorients his quest and increases the urgency. But he is still trying to wrap his head around deep concepts, truth, ethics, morals, principles. Dubeck knows that he's dealing with serious issues and he doesn't ignore the seriousness. The show is comedy, not philosophy, but I was impressed with the thought that emerges from the monologue. There are times when the jokes seem less integral to the play than they are at their best, but I can say the same thing about a lot of comedies. That second set I mentioned did not have the plotter characters of the scheduled part of the evening, and the difference increased my appreciation for The Book of Moron as a play. It's a smart, funny script delivered by a master. The Westport program has an ad for a two-week week run in March of another Dubak show. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I am too. He's a very intelligent uh, performer and writer in what he has to say. And, uh, and uh, I, at first I was a little dubious, you know, that, well, this is really just a stand-up routine. Isn't it? But no, as you said, he really has characters. He has all the things Aristotle says you're supposed to have to have a play going. So I think it's we're quite justified in reviewing him on Two on the Isle. Indeed we are. Yes. Well, and that besides, that was the only play that opened over the holidays. So we can spend the rest of this program looking back on the past year at the uh, some of the plays, productions that we like the best or found most interesting. Maybe not all of the best things of the year, but certainly things that intrigued us and maybe gave us a chance to say something we really wanted to say, too. So let's look at 2016 once more. <laughs>